Hello everyone, welcome to the tutorial of you construct and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about conditions and sockets. The conditions are statements that have to be fulfilled in order for the, for the building to be placed. If all the conditions aren't met or even if one of the conditions isn't met, it's not going to let you place the building. You have currently in the system four different conditions. The check for building conditions are should be showing an object so you can see the, inter the inspector. Um, if I drag the wall to the scene, you're going to see that we have in here four different conditions. So the first two ones are using the check for building condition. This condition checks if you have a building, if you have a specific building in a detection. That means that if we check the sphere, sphere detection method, we have currently two detection methods. It's going to check if this spe specific building, which is this instance is a pillar, is in this certain radius. Uh, or in uh, Raycast, it checks if, if we hit that specific um, building. The collision check checks if we have collision with anything other than the building. This allows you to ignore, not to ignore, but actually make sure you're included with the terrain and stuff like that. Check for ground is currently disabled, but might have been enabled if you are watching this on, the, on an older date than the video was released on. Um, this condition checks if you have ground, if you have a building under you. If, it's, if you don't have a building under you, it's gonna under you, it's gonna make the building basically collapse and fall. The sockets are building building points on the actual building. That means that if we have the wall socket in here, you're gonna see that on this specific zone, if we hit this specific zone, the wall is gonna be snapped into the socket. But we don't really have only snap sockets. We also have freely freely placed sockets. I'm gonna explain about the freely placed uh, the freely placed sockets in a second. Um, but if you, as you see in here, we have the wall socket. The wall socket has a receive buildings. What building do we what buildings have to receive? It can also be several tabs, not only one. Uh, the placing tab, that means socket based or freely based. Uh, for this, it's going to be socket based, that means it's going to snap into this position. We have in here preview object, which I'm going to explain about in a second, and we also have you construct. Uh, you construct physics object. That basically is just the physics of the system. We can also re um, remove that or actually disable that, and it's going to use uh, normal Unity physics. I'm going to explain about why you, you would want to disable that in a second. So the preview object has a way of view to see the final result out of runtime. That means how would, the specific, would, a, speci would a specific building look at uh, the s look if it snapped to the socket out of runtime? Actually, in runtime, it's gonna basically simulate that. Um, so let's check in here the wall. We're gonna have in here three buttons. The first one would just be removing this. It's gonna destroy the preview and it's also gonna remove this safely. The next one is the next two ones are save and copy. Save would take the current uh, scale that we change on the preview. So you can go ahead and change this if you like, and it's going to apply that to our prefab. We can also do it inside the preview. We can check in here apply changes to prefab. That would be saving it, and the get scale from socket is going to be copy, which we're going to say in a second. So the get scale from from socket or the copy in here is going to take the scale of the socket. It's going to take this scale, and it's going to copy that into our socket. I'm gonna get doing here get scale from socket or oops, or for this instance let's see where it was or for this instance I'm gonna go ahead and do copy that's gonna be the same result this is useful for getting new buildings and you wanna uh, get new buildings into your system and scaling them much much faster uh, because if we have an, a, a cube right now created we, we can manually just copy this, the position and scale and whatnot and the rotation but if we do it that way and we just copy the scale from socket and then save it it's gonna be a lot faster and it's a lot faster for those kind of stuff of designing the building um, another another reason for you to use the preview object is if you have a foundation right here the foundation has if I show you one sec has a lot of sockets and you wanna add a new type to it you can basically place um, the preview and all of this all of the builds, building sockets and you can see the end result and that way you can scale the new building appropriately so um, as you can see in here it's gonna be just doing all these kind of things but the next one is why would you want to disable the physics of our system so first of all the physics of the system was mainly created it was originally created in order to you having a less performance issue and not eating the physics limit because let's say the foundation the foundation has currently about 30 I guess or 20 I don't know exactly uh, but a, a huge amount of sockets and if each socket had a unity terrain collider imagine you had a big tower and each and each building in it has sockets it's gonna actually reach the limit a lot faster then we also have a mechanic to disable unused 
uh, sockets are actually um, used sockets. So if you have a socket that um, has a building on it, it's going to disable that socket uh, automatically. Um, the the custom physics system was re was created to reduce that and use our own physics system in order to make sure you don't use normal um, Unity physics for that. So if you go ahead and click on the terrain, the terrain itself is also a socket because the foundation is being freely placed on the socket, and you know you have to have a socket um, originally. So the the terrain is a socket, but the terrain he it has a, a complex collider. It has a terrain collider, and currently the physics system of us, uh, the, the physics system we have in the system, or only implements uh, the box collider. We don't have any other approach for colliders around at the moment because it's useless, and we're probably not going to add any of them as well. So for those kind of complex needs, we have the terrain collider, or actually sorry, we have the Unity colliders. So what you want to do is just disable the physics in here. And the system itself automatically would look for normal Unity physics, and that's the approach we're gonna do in here in this in instance. Because if we have heels, sorry, we can choose normal uh, box collider. So we have in here several options that we explained about. We have in here the center, which basically is and the size, which is normal, uh, basically the same as the box collider of Unity, and we also have the Gizmos color, which is basically the study color of all of the sockets in th in the game. So if you change this, it's gonna change the whole the whole game socket colors, which basically gives you an option to design your colors very nicely, it's design your sockets very much nicely. So yeah, that's it basically. We don't have any other thing. We have uh, we don't have any other thing uh, to say about this. I guess I didn't really explain about the freely based sockets, uh, but the freely based sockets are basically sockets that gets the building to be placed uh, freely. So it's not gonna snap to the specific uh, terrain. It's not gonna snap to this. Or position at zero 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 it's gonna be placed on where your mouse is at so if I go ahead and play the game right now let's go ahead and just save because uh, we did some testing before um, and let's see if we can freely place this not gonna snap to our zero zero position but if we go ahead and place this we're also gonna have a snapping point and the way this is this is enabled is because our uh, foundation has uh, in the base build script it also has uh, the placing tab um, socket and free on free based and that means that if it can't find a socket that has a snap approach it's going to look for one that has a free a free pl uh, placed approach such as the terrain so that's basically it that's basically um the sockets and conditions you can also design your own conditions and there will probably be another tutorial for that you can use it, or you can see at uh, the api um you can look at the api or the other tutorials that will be created for that or you can also just look at how I did the other uh, basic colliders that come with the basic conditions that comes uh, with the asset. So I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you luck creating your own conditions I guess if you need it and creating your own buildings and yeah.